So here is the figure undercoated and ready to go. Now I've used my usual undercoat, which is German Camel Black Brown from Vallejo. That's number 822. Now the uniform, um, and I normally paint my main colours on with just a, over the undercoat, just main coat and highlight. But because this is a light colour and the uniform main colour is going to be Panzer Aces from Vallejo, number 310, Old Wood. And that's quite a light colour. It would take two coats over the dark base colour, which would then give it quite a very strong contrast. So what I'm going to do is to tone the contrast down a bit. And uh, as one of those two coats that I would need to do, I'm going to paint uh, the first coat on the uniform US Field Drab 873. So I'll start with that. Now, I'm going to be covering most of this field drab colour with the main uniform colour when it goes on, but it is still going to form part of the shade. So I'm going to paint it on pretty much the same way as I would with the main colour. I want to try and avoid too stripey a finished look. But I still want to maintain that sufficient shade to get that contrast and shape that I need. Always looking to try and get right around features such as arms. Get around the side and then in under that arm. And then just continue to keep following the folds of the cloth as much as possible. Strip uniform there. And then collar. Just follow the collar around. And here I want to be leaving in shade, but not too much. That's the basic colour on. Now I'm going to go straight into the Panzer Aces Old Wood. That's going to be dry pretty quick. So I can go back to the shorts. And now, as you'll see, I'm pretty much going to repeat the process. I'm going to look to leave some of that extra shade colour that I've put in, the, um, the field drab. But it isn't essential, it doesn't have to be there in not so much, I'll paint it off. I'm painting on the same colour again. That's what you get when you don't clean your palette. Pay attention, Frank. So, what I'll try to say is you don't have to leave equal amounts of the field drab shade colour 
as well as the camo black brown shade colour. The drab is there as an accent and as an additional coat of paint for this main colour to sit on. I'll just try to keep following the folds as before. And that's the main uniform colour. So it's not as anywhere near as bright as it could be because of the intermediate coat that I put on off the um, field drab. So, sorry, highlight colour is going to be model colour Iraqi Sand 819. For that, I'm going to use my Insane Detail brush. So, as much as possible, I'm wanting this highlight, brush it a bit dry. So I want to highlight as much as possible to be right up against the areas of darker shade. That's where we'll get the best contrast. I'm using a very small brush and small amounts of paint. So I have to keep the brush fresh or it's going to, uh, the paint's going to dry. It's going to dry on the brush, which is no good. You know yourself, the paint will stop flowing and it'll start to feel as though it's dragging across the surface. And it should just be nice and smoothly releasing the paint across the surface. I'm trying to get any of these spaces at the awkward angle I'm having to paint that for the camera. And then going to the front, this, getting this right is important. There's a lot of uh, important detail in here. I'm going to turn the figure away just one second. Apologies. Right, and then just go back in there a bit. Right, and there you go, that's the the highlight on the uniform, so things are starting to pop now. So for all the rest of the fabric on the figure, I'm going to use a base colour of uh, green grey, that's double eight six. So let's start with the socks. The 
think I'm just painting around, leaving a bit of shadow for where the socks are rolled over. all the little bits and pieces we've got some webbing and over here too some pouches And as always work right the way around the side of the object, just not the from the front or the angle you're looking at. So what about all just do a nice simplistic little uh, piece of painting just to accentuate that shape with the bottle and the straps around it. biggest feature is this black pack so top part and then do these straps a little panel there underneath and join that up around the sides and then just try to create a little bit of detail in there just with the brush strokes to show some folds and there you go that's the base colour on the other fabric so highlight for this is Panzer AC Splinter Camo Base that's three four five Back to the insane detail brush and we'll approach this in the same way as the main colour in the uniform. And you see it's just really some careful little dashes. putting those dashes at the top of the features as opposed to on the bottom of the roll for the sock. I put one on the top and then one on the top of the main body of the sock and then one above the boot. Just so that as much as possible the, the highlights right on the top edge. Brush is a bit dry. I'm just going to have to clean it. When your brush dries you can refresh it to a degree but there's a point where it's just going to be clogged. And that's where you need to just take a minute, clean it off and start again. So I need to go around these edges. some of those shades and the backpack and the belt and the buckles 
nothing fancy there at all, just put in a little dash of light just to draw out of the darker background round the edges of the water bottle and freshen the brush again And then in the front of the figure, just try and catch one edge of the ribbon. Put a dash there, there. And there you go. So you can see it's really starting to build up the contrast in the shape now. So next I'm going to do some work on what areas will be grey or black. So good old black. 950, what that looks like. Could be wrong because that's a bit of a worn out bottle. I'm going to put a coat on any areas that are going to be grey or basically black like the boots are going to be black so Oops, that went on a bit wet a little lack of control there And then the metallic areas of the brain because I'm not worried about the stock. Looks a little bit of loose filing there. This new material, it can want to stick a bit when you filled it off. So just be uh, mindful when you're painting, you might come across something that looks as though it's stuck to the figure, but it's not. Okay, I think that's going to take a wee minute to dry. So in the meantime, I shall move on to the skin and the base colour. Well, actually, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to fix the shoulder boards. Just going to go back to my uniform highlight colour. Excuse me. Stay in shot. And then that's a wee flash of colour on the shoulders, which isn't bad. So for the skin, its uh, base colour is German Camel Pale Brown and that's um, 825 or 826, I'm not sure. It's seen a lot of service as this uh, bottle. I've even used it for German Camel. So there's quite a lot of um, skin area on these figures. So there's a the legs and I always start by painting the knee on and then working around. The knee's the, the focal point so to speak. Now the face, there's not a lot of detail on this face, this uh, type of plastic where the the casting is, the, the face is through the centre of the casting, it doesn't seem to retain much detail. But our face is basically a nose, a mouth, cheekbones, and an ear. So 
just a little bit of colour in there for the neck as well. That's a basic shape, a bit rough, but it's a basic shape of a face. And onto the hand, and I'm just trying to catch the trigger finger there. Over the top, behind the elbow, then you've got the hand coming up, underneath, don't forget there's an arm there too, there's a thumb, and the rest of the arm. So that's the basic colours on for the skin. If we go back to our grey and black areas, I'm going to take some uh, German grey, that's 995. First thing I'm going to do is put a tiny little highlight onto the boots. I just want to give them a little bit of depth. So it's going to be just a little touch in the front, touch across the laces. Toes and laces, heel, line along the side, nothing strong at all, and that's all they'll get, because we want them to be basically, to be black. Right, now we've got to try and pick out some shape on his gun, so just following the general shape, leaving some black as a shade. Brush is a bit dry there. There you go, that's now ready for the next stage. But before I come to that, I shall highlight the flesh. And for this I'm using game colour bronze flesh tone, any kind of dark flesh tone really suitable just because these guys are um, fighting in the desert. Right, so let's start with the face. So I want to follow the same pattern as before. So I've got a nose Mouth, cheekbones, and ears. And here we've got what's recognisable as a shape of a face. Let the brain do the rest. We just create enough information for the brain to think there's a face. Sometimes when I'm painting fingers I get what I call Homer Simpson hands where there's only three fingers. Sometimes that's because that's the way it's cast or sculpted. But if that's all I get, I'm quite happy with that. It works for Homer Simpson. Because they've only got three fingers, if you notice on the cartoons. But um, it, it creates the, all that's needed, which is impression of fingers. And therefore, the brain does the rest and sees it as a hand. Uh, skin highlight. So back to the brain gun. I'm going to put a highlight on the brain gun. This is a real uh, strong highlight. London Grey 836. And this is what's really going to give it the shape. At the moment it's just a dark 
lump. So let's go back to some of those features. There to create the barrel. Keep that paint flowing. That's a little bit wet, but that's okay. Let's see if I can get in on this awkward angle and catch all the right areas. They were giving it sh the shape to help make it a recognisable feature. There's a couple of wooden areas, and there's always some sort of rifle stock. Okay, yep, rifle stock colour. But I use uh, Panzer Ace's new wood. There's, there is actually still some paint left in this bottle, <laughs> despite how it looks. Quite a bright colour, you know, to be used as a, a stock, uh, a weapon stock, rifle stock kind of colour, but it helps, helps make it pop, especially against a lot of figures that might have green uniforms, brown and green just sink into each other. And then we've got the carry handle. Giving that another coat in just a minute. First, we'll go on to the helmet. So, the shade colour for this is going to be Panzer Ace's Highlight German Field Grey 2, which is 339. Just a coat all over. So as that dries. Back to the colour for the stock and the bang gun. Give that a second coat. It's a very small area to be given a second coat, but just but the pigments on that particular paint uh, kind of demand it. Okay, that's dry enough for our needs, so um, the main colour is going to be Panzer AC's Highlight US Tank Crew 322. So we'll just follow the, the rim of the helmet in the first instance and then paint around the rest just leaving 
Carrying off shoes. So normally I would be thinking about what is my highlight colour going to be, but this is kind of going to be in reverse in as much as I'm not going to use a highlight, but I'm going to use a darker colour. I'm going to go back to my German grey. That's a beat up brush. It's just taking a minute to dry. And I'm just going to take a little bit of paint on my brush, make sure that it is nice and dry. I'm actually going to use a tissue there. This is going to be kind of highlight in reverse. I'm just going to try and catch those edges and distress them. And all around the rest of the... Oh, that's a bit more than a little bit. You know, that's distressing for you. It doesn't have to be precise. And there you go. It's Army Brain Gunner. You can see it's nice and sharply contrasting with the shape. Clearly visible. So, there you go guys, 8th Army. Brain gunner in the new Battlefront flexible plastic.